Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're going to be discussing successful and failed businesses that I have exposed myself to over the last nearly 10 years. My journey started at 18 years old back in 2014 and fast forward now it is February 2023 as I'm recording this video I'm now 27 years old. So my journey really started at a young age and now I want to just share with you all the the failed opportunities and businesses that I got into as well as the successful ones because I believe that anyone that is looking to start a business, create content, become an influencer, uh, figure out a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh stream of income, you're probably going to hit some pitfalls, make some mistakes, have some failures. I believe that is part of the process. And the faster you grow from your failures, the faster you fail forward, I believe the quicker we're going to get to that, that end goal, that end game, which is your purpose, fulfilling your purpose here on this planet Earth and getting paid abundantly to be a servant, to serve others, right? Getting paid abundantly, having the resources provided so that you can deliver your skills, gifts, and talents in the marketplace today. So with that being said, let's direct our attention to the board. Four major numbers, got to know that. What's coming in? Income per month, expenses, debt, and cash flow. I left that blank. That's for you. You need to know your numbers before getting into any opportunity, before anybody pitches you anything, myself, any content creator. It's so important that you know where you stand financially and, and what opportunities are being presented to you. It's usually a couple of them. And which ones can you afford? Which ones are really expensive? Which ones are low risk, right? Which ones are high risk, high reward? We need to be measuring that. And, and a great way to measure where you are is to see where how you're doing financially. Are you positive cash flow? Or are you negative cash flow? Are you low cash flow, 50 bucks a month? Or are you high cash flow, right? High savings, but no investments? Like, let's decide where we're at. With that being said, going as far back as 2014 to 2023, this is my window of all the different businesses that I've started, failed, started, and had success in. So here are the winners, here are the losers, and then these are potential winners. These are opportunities that I have recently got involved in, in the last year that can potentially be winners in the future to come. So let's start with the losers. Cutco. Now, when I say loser, I mean financially spiritually, emotionally, uh, mentally, wisdom, knowledge, experience, all wins. So every single one of my losers, all my failures in the different businesses that I've started and, and failed at financially, I was able to actually pull a lot of success out of it where I, I picked up a lot of sales experience, following up, email, referral, leads, marketing, different communication strategies, speaking strategies, creating content, like all wins. So I don't want to disregard any of that. We're just focusing on financially, it's a loss and financially, and, and it's a loss because I'm no longer selling or promoting or, or that particular product or service, right? So Cutco is a company I joined back in 2014 that was just strictly selling high-end kitchen cutlery knives. I did make money. I also did not make money, right? I did not continue to make money. I lost interest, right? I learned new things. I got exposed to new opportunities that my attention and, and focus gravitated in a different direction. So Cutco, that was 2014. Let me put the timelines on these so we're clear. So that was 2014 ACN. That was 2015. This is a network marketing, network marketing. So we can say network marketing or if you want to use the term MLM, there's obviously differences, but we're not going to get into like debating. So whichever term you want to use, network marketing, MLM, or direct sales, they're pretty much in this in the same family, although many would agree would argue that is not the case, and I would agree with them as well. So just for simplicity, network marketing companies, Cutco, ACN, Nerium, and Renatus, as well as Legal Shield and United Financial Freedom. These are all in the family of network marketing companies that either require some money up front, you gotta buy the product, you sell a product, you can build a team, you can make different streams of income within the same company. All right, so Nerium, that was like 2015. Invicta is a watch company. So I used to sell watches. This is an Invicta watch, right? It's actually a, a different name, but it's under the Invicta family. 
So I used to sell a bunch of different watches. Did not do very well at selling watches. Again, learned a lot. So that was 2015 as well. Renatus is a real estate education company that I joined around 2017-ish. And also that I believe I invested about 3K into that program. I think I spent a good five to 8K on watches. Nerium, probably a good three plus thousand. ACN was 500 plus a monthly fee. So a monthly fee. Cutco was actually, I want to say under 500. I don't remember. Like I, because you can sell knives, make money. They keep a commission. Use that money, reinvest back into your, your business. So that was one of the lowest investment options. ACN was 500 up front and then there's a monthly fee. Nerium bought a big package of product, right? That was like 3,000 plus. Invicta was like five to 8,000 in, in watches. I had a whole bunch of watches and only sold very few. Renatus was a $3,000 program. It's like a one-time thing, lifetime access. So I still have access to Renatus. That's the cool part, right? If I ever wanna go back and learn more or if the, if the company changes and make some different things, that could be done. Online Trading Academy, right? And, and by the way, you might have heard some of these companies or you might be getting pitched right now and you're wondering if you should move forward with it or not. Don't let my losers be your losers, right? If you have a good feeling about any one of these companies, you want to move forward with it, I would say go and experience, right? Experiment, learn from it, right? And if it ends up being a failure, just look at it as like, okay, that's a financial failure. That's a uh you, you lost a couple of funds here, but what did you gain from it? What did you learn? Take what you learn to put into the next opportunity, which could be your next winner, right? So Online Trading Academy, that was about a 9,000 or so investment that I actually did with a, a business partner that I worked with. That's a learn how to trade Forex, options, futures, stocks, all that, right? This is something I also have lifetime access to. So I have lifetime access even though i didn't stick with it right i could come back to it at a later time it just means that hey i put nine grand in i didn't make money i put three grand in i did make a little money there but i didn't continue to pursue it right united financial freedom i did make some good money in financial freedom i think i made about ten thousand plus with them and it's only a couple hundred bucks like it was not a big upfront cost so bought their product I just have some differences with the company, some things I don't like that they're doing, that they're focusing on. I don't think they're focusing on their original mission, which was debt elimination. They, they started rolling in uh, the infinite banking concept and selling life insurance policies using IUL. So they're kind of merging philosophies and there's some overlapping, which I'm like, okay, I get it. But at the same time, you originally were all about helping people eliminate debt but now you're saying buy this policy and use this policy to pay off your debt. It's going to increase the timeline, of course, but you know, you'll know you come out net on top. Yeah, an argument can be said about that. What is the likelihood, the success rate of the average American person to comprehend that whole strategy plus debt elimination, plus discipline, plus focus when there's not the coaching that is consistent for the amount of years it's going to take to successfully implement that kind of a strategy? So that's why I started to kind of distance myself a little bit. I'm like, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I feel comfortable promoting this software anymore. At first it was pretty cool because it was competing with velocity banking and I could, I could have a software basically, you know, think the way I'm thinking in terms of debt elimination. And I just don't see that being the case any longer. So I consider that a, a loss in the books, even though I made money. So I'm profitable with UFF in terms of what I put in and what I got out. Same with Cutco, you know, the amount of money I put in versus what I got out, I netted a profit, right? But I'm just no longer continuing to promote or, or talk about these companies as much as I am with the, the winners, which we'll get to next. Finally is Legal Shield. Now, Legal Shield, again, I've made money, just not as much as I was planning or projecting to. And it has the potential to come to the winning side. So I haven't totally given up on Legal Shield, right? To be fully transparent, I own like five, six, seven different Legal Shield products that I personally pay for myself and on the business side. 
religiously on a monthly basis. I pay for these things. So I have no issue with the product. My only issues are typically on the business side, the network marketing, the MLM kind of vibe that I don't like. There's not a whole lot of room to bring in new ideas and collaborate with people who are in the company. It's it, it can be tough talking to people who are very seasoned in the network marketing philosophy, the MLM philosophy. It's like it's like an end all be all type of a philosophy where if you start talking investing in real estate, personal finance, building credit, like these other strategies and concepts to try to collaborate with someone who's all about network marketing MLM. It's like there's there's no space for collaboration often, especially when I, you know, reach out and I'm like if all we're going to talk about every leadership call, every Super Saturday and Super Sunday and Super Friday and every Friday night and every Monday night, every freaking call is about recruiting. But there's very little product education knowledge. There's like there's not a whole lot of collaborative. Like how do we bring people together that are selling the same product and let's maybe potentially add other services. So I'm just not getting that from within the the company at Legal Shield, and that's cool. That's just not their focus. I'm again, I'm I'm cool with that. Again, I love the product. I got nothing bad to really say about the product. It does what it says it does. It also notifies you and lets you know what it doesn't do right so you're not like blindsided this isn't a get out of jail free card with legal shield a lot of people's i don't know why they comprehend it that way sometimes it, it, it's not something that is going to cover every single legal matter right that's not the case it's really about the preliminary most basic stuff whenever you're dealing with the law citations tickets um if you have a, a court issue or a legal lawsuit, they can advise and then refer if they don't do a particular thing. So I, I have a lot of value in that in that sense. So I've made money, invested more money than what I've made. So in that regard, there's a loss there, but that's okay because I'm a customer as well as a pro, like a business owner providing the product to people, clients that whenever I come across them. So I'm cool with that. No biggie, no biggie. But it does have the potential, the potential to be a winner, right? Because I have content every now and then someone buys the product. I get a little commission from that. That's cool. Let's come over to the winners. In the last few years, creating content, right? I started creating content in 2018 and creating content just by being monetized has been able to generate, I think, around 50K. That's monetization income from creating nearly 700 plus videos 700 or 800 i think is where i'm at now now if we are to look at the overall business um i've been able to generate seven figures to date where content creation is like the fundamental like basis of being able to get in front of an audience to then provide different products and services along the way right so content creation itself 50k but it's part of a bigger pie in this that I've been able to generate seven figures. Next is coaching. Coaching, been able to generate 500,000. So nobody would know that I coach had I not created content. So that's why I'm saying like that, that's it's a big reason why I'm at seven figures. It's because of content creation as a result of coaching someone that hired me, paid me money because they saw content, because they saw the education that I was putting out there right? So I found that to be very, very valuable. That's a huge win. The amount of money that went in versus what came out, huge returns, cannot complain. So coaching, that's financial coaching, that's consulting, that's business consulting, coaching, personal financial management, content creation, coaching, coaching people on how to become a coach in the finance space, all that right around 500 plus thousand. Um, and we'll, we'll tie that together as well, which is course creation. So from the, from creating content, people find out that I do one-to-one -one coaching. They find out that I have courses where it's DIY. So instead of hiring me, you could do it yourself by following my frameworks, by following my strategies that I've been able to successfully do for myself and, uh, client case studies that you can learn from as well. So we'll put that together. 500 plus thousand is what that has produced. IBC, don't know the total number. I have to double check it because we're at the top of the year. So I have to get the, the income generated from 2022. 
but I can tell you 2018 on IBC, so IBC Infinite Banking Concept, this is selling whole life insurance. So selling life insurance, life insurance, sales, product, whole life, been able to generate multiple six figures. So 2018 was like a couple thousand, right? So we'll do, I think it was like 3000 plus something like that. 2019 was 75 K 2020 was a hundred plus thousand 2021 I believe was 150 2022 I think I'm around the same number I could be wrong it's either a little bit higher or most likely a little lower right I didn't promote IBC as much as I did in the previous years still nonetheless we're talking multiple six figures that that's been able to generate so that's a huge win digital storefronts that's Amazon store, Shopify, Walmart. That is in partnership with my friend and business partner, Alex Albaran, who has helped quite a few of you watching clients um, and some new people. You've been able to build these digital storefronts where you're generating passive income by providing products, right? That people buy, that people need all day long. So you're, you're getting involved in the e-commerce online shopping space, which is a five plus trillion dollar market. And you're getting your little piece of that market, which is huge. Cannot complain. So I've made multiple thousands of dollars from promoting the service. So I have a digital storefront. I have a store where I have products, merch, I've only generated a couple hundred bucks, maybe like 200 if that. Haven't been promoting it as much yet. Still building it out, working out the kinks. But I've made thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars promoting the service. Does that make sense? So on, I'm on the affiliate and referral marketing side where I'm not actually providing this service, right? That's a business partner of mine providing that service. They pay me a commission to bring them a lead right? That converts into a sale and they serve that client. They get results. They're making money, right? As for me personally, it's 2023. I've only made about maybe 200 or so dollars with my digital storefront, which I'm perfectly fine with because again, I'm not promoting it just yet. I'm slowly launching it out. It's not my main focus, but it's there. So anyone that come across my website and they're like, Hey, do you have any merch or anything like that? I'm like, yeah, I got t-shirts. I got, you know, coffee mugs. I got book bags and you know, all kinds of different knickknacks. What I'm doing is I'm building a financial clothing brand. So I'm making sure that I have the funds in different areas to support that little project. So that's how I view it right now. It's like a little project. Now here are the potential winners that have a lot of potential. It's a company called power that provides solar panels. So it's an online platform that has different services. One of their main products and one of their main services is solar panels, right? So I've got a link on my resources page regarding solar panels. So I have worked with quite a few clients that have obtained solar panels in the past and we're doing velocity banking on their solar panels, doing velocity banking on different debts. And then I get approached last year from someone in my church, her name is Maureen, and she presented the business model and I'm like, oh, this is a fantastic offering that my clients and new clients are already considering buying in the near future. Now I can offer it to them via another referral partnership affiliate program, all right? So there's already been some income generated. I've got, I've got one client so far and the thing with solar panels, it's, it's a high ticket item. So there's room for a good amount of com commission to be paid out just like there is with life insurance right as well as a digital storefront store so that's that's a huge potential win there it's not a winner yet it has potential so i'm just starting it out learning getting all the the kinks again learning the business model and that such next is exp which is a real estate platform so power is a platform exp is a platform and it's really for uh real estate agents right? So real estate agents. My mom is a real estate agent through eXp. So she got her license through eXp, helped her with that. She's now able to generate an income helping people buy and sell homes, rent, right? So she's a part of that real estate transaction. A lot of opportunity there. Finally is Better Wealth. Better Wealth 
is a name of a YouTube channel, but the person I'm really uh, collaborating with, his name is Caleb. He's the, the CEO, you know, the founder, I want to say of Better Wealth, the and asset. He wrote a book, phenomenal guy, learning a lot from him and his team, people like Demetrius and, and Jeremy, like learning a ton from these guys in terms of how they operate their finances for themselves, clients. They've got services like estate planning, tax planning, coaching, financial coaching. They do infinite banking, life insurance. They create content. They coach. They basically do a lot of what I'm doing just on a bigger scale with clients that make way more than my average clientele. So they're dealing with six, seven figure and up clients that have tax issues. They have a tax pain. Primarily, they also want to do infinite banking. They want to get that going. And so they have a really good business model and, and I'm a client. So the reason why I'm saying it's a potential win, haven't made any money yet, right? By promoting their services, no money has been generated yet. As I'm recording this video in February of 2023, we've been building out a program and relationship for the last six months, I think, or so, but I will be recovering quite a bit of money just by being a client on the tax side of things. So they're now doing my taxes. So there's a, a segment in their company where they provide tax planning, tax coaching services, filing, the whole nine, bookkeeping, accounting, the whole nine. So I got everything transferred over to them. They're going to be able to smooth that whole process for me, help me recover, save a lot more money on taxes. That's I to me, that's already a win just by being a customer. So now I also have the opportunity because I create content, because I have a following, I have a loyal audience. I'm now able to push business over to them for clients that I have that are making multiple six figures a year that I have some clients doing seven figures. And I've been talking to them, you know who you are, where I'm asking questions like, hey, how confident are you about your tax strategy? Do you feel like you're paying a lot in taxes or do you know, do you not know? Most don't. Most have no idea. Most just pay the bill and, you know, on with it. They avoid the headache. But understanding as a business owner and even as an, an individual, taxes is your number one expense in your life. So being able to reduce your tax liability is a huge form of cash flow recovery that could massively improve our velocity banking and infinite banking strategy. So it's a very unique service that I can add into finance geek territory, finance geek ministry, that again is going to be able to provide a stream of income to continue to do the, the projects and the things that I'm most passionate about. I don't have to worry about money because I got all these different income streams coming in from people who have businesses in their own gifts, skills, and talents that they've mastered in. And all I'm doing is creating content, promoting them, saying hallelujah, check them out. I'm a client. I got results. Check them out. That's all I'm doing, right? With the content that I create and then staying in my skills, gifts, and talents, the things that I've been called to do by the father to fulfill his will here on earth and match that up with the, the purpose that I've been assigned with. So last look at the board here, the losers, the winners, potential wins. These are all my successes and failures. This is not an overnight process. Although I am young, 27, I've been in my journey for nine years, approaching 10 years. Many of you are 40, 50, 55, almost 60 years old, but you've never taken the time to start that journey as either an entrepreneur, a business owner, either because you never was taught, it just, it never came across, you never had the time for it, whatever excuses, whatever reasons you come up with, whatever obstacles that's in the past, you are now starting your journey. So if you're 50 years old, even though you're double my age, let's say you're 50 years old, but you just started your journey in entrepreneurship or starting a business at age 48, right? So you're two years in, let's say, but you haven't made any money yet. Give it time. Don't give up because this is a process. Understand from 2014 in my journey from 2014 all the way to 2018, I did not make a lot of money, right? I had so many failures. I mean, let's count them out, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got eight failures, one, two, three, four, five wins. So I have more losses than I do wins, but, but these wins over 
compensate for all the losses, right? Massive, massive gains. So understand you might have 10 losses before you have one win. The key is to not quit. That's like the major key. So again, going back to my example, let's say you're a single mom, single dad, 50 years old, you're two years into your journey, you 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 started a business, it, it flopped, you invested in crypto, it flopped, you invested in stocks, that flopped, you you looked at this YouTuber, that, that YouTuber got exposed, he came out to or she came out to be a fraud, and you lost money. And so like, you're going through your season of say, loss, but you're learning, you're growing, you're gaining, you're gaining experience. So now you're two years in, it might take another two, it might take another three, it might take another four years before you get that first win. The key is to not quit. And don't let your age assume that you, you that you're supposed to be at a, at a certain rank or a certain understanding or position. No, you're actually two years old, right? I'm nine years old in my journey, even though I'm 27, right? 27, but I'm only nine years into my journey. You might be 50 years old, but only five years into your journey. Buddy, you're only five years old when it comes to entrepreneurship. You're only three years old. So you're a toddler. You're literally a toddler. I am getting out of toddler, becoming a young teen soon, right? So I'm nine years old, approaching 10 years. I'm uh, What's that? Adolescent? What, what, what is that period? Before teen, but after toddler? What do they call you? I don't know. So whatever that period it is, that's how you need to like look at it. We're like, wait a minute. No, I'm a baby at this. It's okay if I'm not making seven, eight, nine, twelve figures like these gurus say I should be. Don't, don't, don't get discouraged by other people's speed and efficiency and success. Give yourself that grace, that patience to be able to have the success that you want to have in this life. And if you're a believer, you're a man, woman of God, you best be relying on the Father as your source and not these other resources. Rely on source to obtain resources from the source, align his will with your will, align your will with his will, operate with him in the presence with him, operate in your business with him. My goodness, you just might speed up the process. But if you're relying on Joe Schmo over here and Tom over here, Harry over here, Susan over here, Matthew, over, you, you know, you're relying on all these other people. You're getting all this wisdom, all this knowledge and experience from resources instead of starting with source first, then proceeding. Now, talking to my audience who is not a believer, not a man or woman of God, it's much easier for you. It's a matter of logic, understanding what are you good at? What are your skills, gifts, and talents? Let's identify those very quickly. So super easy, right? Then from there, you, you take your skills, gifts, and talents, and we go in, out into the marketplace and we look for companies, we look for entrepreneurs, we look for leaders that can use your skills, gifts, and talents, pay you abundantly for that. Now it's just a matter of personally managing your finances, spending less than what you make, saving, investing, and, and helping out here and there, giving. That's a universal reward of giving. It's a universal like fact. If you give, you receive. Like that, There's some principles behind that that you can adopt and incorporate. So we can keep it just straight logic. We don't got to go into the whole philosophy and emotions and spiritual. We don't got to do none of that. That's just me talking to my people, my believers, because they often get mixed up in that area and they don't know the logic part. Whereas for my non-believers, we can just have a logical conversation here. And then maybe down the line, maybe there's room for some emotional, spiritual topics. We can open up on some financial traumas you went through when you were six and mom said this and that said that and this is why you don't believe because this happened, you know, or you've read all the facts and this is why I don't believe because the universe and the cosmos and this and that. Happy to have those conversations. But if we're looking at how do we create success in your business? How do we, you know, find those winners? We got to give it time. We have to go through the process, go through the obstacles, take as much as we can. Let's learn, adapt, be willing to course correct, be willing to adapt, right? And analyze the opportunities so we don't keep repeating mistakes, right? Go from there. So that's all. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.